ForbesDVD.com. What's up, everybody? You are now on the official YouTube of ForbesDVD.com and the official website ForbesDVD. This interview with AZ was done over nine years ago in Harlem, in the streets of Harlem. Me and MREC had some business to take care of up there. We bumped into AZ, knocked the video out, knocked some footage out. This shit has been lost in the source. We just got hold of this interview, so I don't want nobody to think that we ran and got up with AZ and did an interview because other platforms did that. No, this interview is nine years old, 2007. He talks about the book Game Over. He talks about the movie Paid in Full. And he talks about the documentary um, Game Over in this. And, you know, I thought it was a dope interview. So he's like, fuck it, let's put it out. The people need to see this. This shit was on the streets. Peace. What it is, people? It's your boy, Doggy Diamonds. You already know I'm the interview king. And I'm here with a legend right now, living legend, still out here. With the, the 2009, he said, that's what we're looking at right now, 2009 X6. I think I seen him just pull out the sky right quick with this right here. He didn't drive down the block, he flew. This is AZ, y'all. This is Mr. Payton Ford, Mr. Game Over, Mr. Harlem right here. This is AZ. Yeah, hey, Game going? Over, Game Over the book. Go grab that, man. Yeah. All right, let them know. Let them know where could they get that book at right now. Barnes and Nobles, Barnes and Nobles, Black Star Video. Okay. You know, any local bookstore, man. If they don't have it, make sure they get it, man. Have them order it, you know, put it on their shelf, man, because good dope sell itself. You know what it is, bro. Yeah, that's what it is. So, um, what inspired? I know you did the movie. You did the pay the full movie. You did the, the DVDs. No, it was it was actually on VHS. <laughs> yeah. The game over was on VHS. When it first came out. When it first came out. What inspired you to do the book? This my man right here, Big Twin. What it do, fam? <laughs> All right. So, so we got the, um, we can let them see this right here. Yeah, go grab that book, you, man. Go grab the book. So I wanted to ask you, like, you put the movie out first, and now you put out the book. Normally, it goes the other way around. How did that happen? The Lord speaks in mysterious ways, man. Okay. I feel like God maybe let me write the original screenplay, which was entitled Trap. Okay. And they brought forth, paid it for, Rockefeller, Merrimax. I respect the movie, good movie, but... The message that I was trying to provide to the people, like, yo, this ain't the way to go, because I seen the next generation heading this way. Okay. 100 miles an hour with no brakes, and I'm trying to, like, yo, slow down, pump your brakes. It ain't all candy like that. So my, my film that I wrote was trying to say it was a trap that we okay. was getting into. So I try to lead them in a different way. So the book and the documentary game over kind of gave you the inside story. Okay you know, more real depth with human beings instead of actors that really live this life telling you, you know, so you can make a wise decision. You know, like, I ain't fucking with this, or you do, or you think you could beat it, you know, gag, and Trap. What, and what year did you have the title Trap? Because I got, I wanted to ask you about that. Trap, uh, what was it, like 80? 99, I believe, 1999. So do, you think, do you find it funny that now, Trap means, well, we used to call it money back at one point. Yeah. Trap used to be money to us. But, but now a lot of them in the South are saying the trap has a lot to let do. Me, let me, let me, go, ahead, go in, go Let in. me fix that for you right now. Okay. In my deepest thoughts. Go ahead, go in. I got trapped from listening to a Malcolm X speech. Okay. And it made all the sense in the world to me. Like, okay. you know, we're trapped in this, this is cycle, and this is the only way we feel to get money we sell drugs uh -huh. that's what I saw so I said that's a good title mm -hmm. now I gave my film to Rockefeller to do entitled trap uh -huh. and recognizing the South is all on trap right now but seeing how the you know how they market young Jeezy when he first came out uh, trap or die uh -huh. So I don't know if that's the slang of the South, or uh, they saying fuck that trap or die, get money or else. You feel what I'm saying? It's kind of weird to me. You feel me? But um, under from Malcolm X's point of view, I feel trap is where it belongs, where it okay. should stay. So, you feel so, me? so now are you gonna run with that name Trap, or are you? How do you? How do you? Aim nah, that's that? that's that's done. That's a that's that's a screenplay. Okay. It still exists. But you know, that's in the hands of the Rockefeller and Merrimax right now. Okay. And they brought forth the movie paid in full. But I think if they did the trap, it would have been, you know, a little much more powerful. So so how do you like from from um 
the way you was portrayed in the movie was you came into the game, not saying by accident, but you was fucked up in the game. So you came. Was that the right portrayal of you? Mm, yo, it was. It was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I respect it because I didn't want to hustle. I ain't yeah, choose yeah. the game. The game chose me. And, and who I am, in my heart, in my mind, like, you know, I'm a good dude, man. I'm the type of dude that'd rather see you with it than me with it. Uh -huh. You know, I'm gonna give before I get. You know, and I feel that way, I continue to be able to see that way. Because I'm a giver, you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. People that take, you know, they like the, the butcher, and I'm, I feel like I'm like a farmer. You get what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I'm gonna keep it so niggas can eat, and fuck it, man, it, it ain't nothing. I'm gonna go into the next step, because I could think on another level. Like for example, right now I just finished writing a movie entitled Mob Style. Okay. And you can people might call it paid in full two or whatever. I roll with that. But Mob Style, people don't even know that we started to me really like gangster rap in on this coast, man. Niggas don't know that. Yeah. Schooly D so, just size you, you know mob style. You know, I'm talking about from a Harlem point of view. Okay, okay. You right. understand? I'm not going to talk about what I don't know about. Okay. But I know from hands-on, selling dope and moving, and not really doing it to be rappers and shit, just going to the studio, popping shit, nigga, we getting it out, 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 just throwing out tapes. I know we created these dudes that's in position today, man. I know that for a fact. So, I wanted to ask you about that, because, like, mob style, but I remember... What's going on was the record. I sent on video music box. I was little as hell. Yeah. And did you intend on being a rapper or just was it what you just said? You just wanted to put because that was the original paid in full story, it was all it's, in that record. Exactly. If they man. do yo, Google, Google, YouTube, Mom style. <laughs> what's the, going on, black? What's going on and coming on? But it'll come up. But this is the reason why I wrote the film. Okay. And I'm not pointing no fingers at nobody. I'm just showing people in the film, step by step how we did it and then you take it from that point on yeah. and start putting your pieces together oh that's where he got that from oh that's where he got you can see yeah, it for yeah, yourself yeah. you feel me i'm not the type that cause conflict because i feel we all gotta eat but damn still but respect the head of it yeah you feel, if you, don't, you feel me if you don't respect that you crazy man acting like you was this and was that come on man so how do you explain to the kids now how do you make them understand it's cool to work in the clean how do you get them to understand that? That it's cool to work in the cleaning? It's cool to work in the cleaning. Common sense, man. Everybody that, that choose the game is basically dead or in prison, man. Okay. From the 80s. Yeah. And if they're not, they're somewhere telling these stories on these documentaries. And if you look at it for what it's worth, come on, man. That shit is not it. They be bragging about that crazy shit, man. We gotta, we gotta, I feel like global warming is like the coming of, of, of a new world. God's world is coming back. And, 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 and the truth must come to the light. So we got to prepare to qualify. We got to start like putting the garbage in the garbage and putting the truth in the truth. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. Now, like, you ain't got to live that life no more. If you can act or you can do a documentary, a film, okay, bag it up, put it in a package, put it on the shelf, that's good. But don't act like you a monster, you know? And that's the reason why I believe like jay Z is successful. He, on stage, he's Jigga, he's this, he that. But when he come off stage, yo, Sean Carter fam, yeah, let's do exactly. business. It ain't like Tupac get off stage thug life and that caused conflict. Because there's some thugs out here that's gonna check you, man. You gotta be, gonna be so you gotta, you know, be be wise, man. So so right now the slang is the 80s. I'm an 80s baby. Bringing the 80s back. How do you feel about that? You lived in the 80s, survived the 80s. Do a lot of these kids really, really know what the 80s was like when they say that? I don't think so. But if you read this book, uh -huh. They'll have a clue. Do you think they'll brag about the 80s? Because you know, people say the Reagan listen, era. Listen, what do, what I'm gonna don't put they it like this. In the 80s, I believe the whole government, if you watch these documentaries, you can see that everybody was involved with the Coke movement. Uh -huh. And it was like a, a green light. You know, we had cheese lines from maybe from fucking here to 150th Street. Uh -huh. Police ride by not saying nothing. We, we moving. But today, you scared to be in a company of two or three niggas without the police rolling, questioning you with the fucking ID. So it's not a part of the plan no more. Uh -huh. 
You understand? Uh -huh. So why would you work against something that's working totally against you now? So the game is over, man. So that's the difference from the 80s. In the 80s, it was like everybody was doing it. It was free to do it. It was straight Scarface in the street, for real, for real. It's over, bro. And that cause I'm saying it, fuck me, but look into politics and really see it's done, man. 9-11, whole new world order, brother. Everything is under surveillance, man. You feel me? Everything's under surveillance, so you gotta be sharp, man. So I wanted to ask you, Snap like, out of it. you, you co-signed General, you on this record. Yeah, yeah. What made you do that? Cause, a lot, Cause there's a lot of artists that we've seen, I'm from Brooklyn, man. Okay. We've seen a lot of artists from Harlem come before him. Okay. We never seen you stand with nobody. Why is that and why are you still with him? We'll put it like this, man. I listened to his music. He came to me as a man and like, yo, hey, I want you to get on my joint with me. I jumped on it. Boom. He trying to do what he got to do. I like his movement. And we're going to try to make it happen, man. You understand? And I feel he, he's a businessman and he mean what he say. He Everything he said he going to do, he's been on point. And I respect cats like that, man. So you know, I'll, I'll help anybody, you know, all I'm doing is, you know, represent, put myself in there. And, you know, one, one thing bounces off the other, man, eat and let eat, bro. So nobody else from Harlem, rapper, ever asked you to stand with them before? I'm gonna put, cats do, but... What, make you, what made you say no? Because you obviously said Because no. it ain't just them. Okay. It's some other crazy shit they moving with. Okay. And I ain't gonna, you know... You know, shit on it, but it ain't that ain't my world, fam. Okay. My color's green. If you understand where I'm coming from, yeah, man. So, that and that's real talk, bro. So, um, right now I wanted want you to talk about the the movie that you're trying to that's about to come. Oh, that's gonna happen. Yeah, bro. Let, let like explain to people a little it's bit. It's just like paid in full when I wrote it with no doubt in my mind that it wasn't gonna get done. It was written through me by God just as well as this. This is not something that they want. This is okay. something that you need. Man. Okay. You know, I don't be dealing with the wants. I ain't that type of dude be posing, front. I'm going to give you what you need, man. Okay. Give you your mind back so you can start fixing your frequency and stop living in the lie. You understand? Because the lie got to die, man. Yeah. You understand? Uh -huh. It's the truth that's going to set your thoughts free so that you can start placing cats in Sesame Street where they belong and putting the streets back to where it belongs. But, but do you think that that's possible with so much fronting going on? Because you see, people will put a lot of money into a front. Do you think that's possible? If you want to be real, you got to make it possible. Okay. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Like, I just got off the phone. I'm not being disrespectful. Like, dude... The documentaries we put out, these books I've been putting out, uh -huh. a lot of real cats be calling me. Uh -huh. uh, Rick Ross people just call me. Okay. He wanna, you know, you know, say certain things about certain situations. And you know, boom, I'm gonna put him in the, the DVD or the documentary, whatever we're gonna work on, and let him get his voice across, because people need to hear what's popping behind that situation. I don't know, you know, but Boom, just as well as he got a platform, then owns have a platform. Everybody need to be heard, bro. Because so the streets want to know, so basically, you're right? About, <laughs> clarify for the, the people. Fucking streets you're talking about know. the original Rick Ross or the rapper? I'm talking about Rick Ross that's in jail right now, I believe. The real Rick Ross. That was moving them birds okay. Okay. state to state. Yeah. For real, for real. Okay. I don't know disrespect to homeboy. I don't know him or what he do or how he do what he do. I'm just, this is what happened and, you know. I'm gonna respond to it. You feel me? So, so you was also one of the original documentaries. With the, the Let me put it original. this way, bro. When Game Over came out uh -huh. on VHS, I watched it on VHS. Nobody was doing no documentaries, fam. Okay. Nobody. No, no, say it in the camera again. So when Game Over hit, it wasn't a documentary to be bragging or boasting about this shit. It was a documentary saying, "Look what happened to us, shorty. This ain't the way to go." Okay. But now, it's like they looked at that shit like, oh, fuck that, we was the only niggas. Them niggas ain't the only one getting money. They start doing their documentaries. I, I know everybody got a story to tell, and tell your story, but please, don't be ignorant about it, man. Don't tell your story to put yourself in prison, fam. Because some niggas will be on there. I'm getting it with the gun on them, and the feds grab it, snatch you up, <laughs> boom. That's your case right there. So, Come on, now. So how many documentaries? That shit we did happened 20 years ago. We can talk about it now to try to save minds. 
It ain't like we doing it to be stunting or be acting and shit. So, so you was like, you was really, really out here. How many documentaries came across after you that you seen like, oh, that nigga's full of shit. He wasn't even out here. Like Yo, that. man, it's to the point I don't, I can't even look at him no more, bro. <laughs> It's just the same as with the Fed magazine. When them cats came and asked me to do the, the first article for Fed magazine, first that was the first magazine that hit. Mm. And after that, I see Mad Underground magazine. Mm. So I understand the energy that we, 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 we did. But I know for a fact that it's something more deeper than this. In this film that I just wrote, if we shot scene for scene, word for word, How you want it? It can wake a lot of dudes up, man. You know, in high places just as well as low places, man, because they need to know. They don't know. They just put behind money behind this bullshit, but oh, this family's hurting, man. There's a lot of cats that's suffering, and they gotta try to explain to their kids what's really going on when these kids is putting on an act, man. I want you to it's a total fucking act, man. And I want you to explain to people what crack really did to the people. Explain it on what it really, it made a lot of people money, but for the community, what did it really do to the community? Like, I'm, I'm gonna put it, like right in this film, Mark style, right? When you write, you gotta dig up and find history. You're going back in time. And if anybody, I believe every man should write their life story. Just write it, and you'll flush out a lot of shit like, oh, that's why you'll begin to put two and two together. It was a lady I knew that was a nurse. Right? Her name was Elaine. She went from Elaine to cocaine Elaine within months to a crackhead to dying like in the streets, nigga robbing or killing her in the streets. And I seen this lady, a good nurse, I seen her come down to this. So when I wrote, was writing about it, it's like, damn, Elaine, you know, that's what crack did to the community, man. Do you, do you to the point of, I believe in the 80s, they flooded this area, Harlem, with, with drugs and shit, coke, crack, niggas went crazy. And in the 90s, it seemed like guns came in. And then police came in. Now everybody's in jail or dead. Now the mission's accomplished. Now look at it. The community, the buildings cost two million, three million, four million, because now it's in the hands of the other people. So, because I, I, I want you to explain to them, like, at it's one like point, a setup, Harlem, a trap. at one point, Harlem was like the black renaissance, you had all the clubs, all the, all of the, the white entertainers had to come to Harlem to hang out, I don't think they know that. Yeah. So, do you, like, you you trying to tell them that it's an actual fact, that it was a conspiracy I to believe get that so. out of here. I believe so, definitely, bro. And we fell for the trap, and the results is, the proof is in the pudding, man. It's like people are fighting to hold on to their little apartments, man. You know, buildings costing two or three million. Rent is like three or four thousand dollars for apartments. So you know, if you ain't got it, you got to get the fuck out of it. And that's that's how it's going down. So you know, the mentality of a lot of these little dumb young niggas is fuck that I gotta eat. What do you want to say directly to them? Because they want the two thousand nine and they don't Listen, know how to get it. So tell them how. I'm gonna I'm 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 put it like this, brother. Unity is key. We're not broke, man. Black people is not broke. We're separated. In sets, cliques. Colors, blocks. Come on. If you put it back together as one, we whole again. We got money again. See, that we is the difference. Turn we upside down, you got me. That's the mentality that's fucking us up, man. Me, I'm gangster. The gangsters is killing the hustlers, man. Got to come up out of that dumb shit, man. Start loving each other again, man. For what it's worth, man. So how For example, go ahead. General, he coming out with his album, right? If everybody from the hood, if they like him or not, just buy this shit, man. It wasn't going to cost you $15. Look how much money you spending on smoke. This or that bullshit daily. Yeah. Buy that. Now my man's a millionaire. When you in the studio working on your shit, everybody buy it. Now he's straight. And keep it going, bro. But do you think some of the other rappers before General fucked it up by taking the hood money and leaving? They robbed. Rap was created in the hood for us, oh, man. Oh. 
for us, man. And it got it's a tree with many different branches. You got gangster rap, you got this rap, that rap, but it's a tree that's still growing. But some dudes try to take the tree from the poor and give it to the rich, man. And those are the dudes that shouldn't be respected, fam. Fuck that, man. And then once they give it to them, they try to shut, you know, control the airwaves and don't play that, don't play block and shit. I hear better song on mixtapes than I hear on the air, fam. Because it's programmed. Everything is programmed. It's, it's, it's fucked up. So, so back in the days you had the, what's going on black. Was people, did people play your shit because they were scared you was going to come at them? Like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah, nah, B, I ain't never, I ain't, B, listen, them. I ain't never approach a nigga like that, man. That gorilla dumb shit. Your fan boom, play this, you like it, you like it. They played on the strip because it was what it was, man. It was the truth, man. It's no, it's the truth. It's like, it's no doubt about it that you could deny it. And you want to be a part of something that you, oh, this going to be hot. So you want to play something that's real first. And, and how many records did you put out? Because I remember... We put, out, we put out four like, albums, to yeah, be exact. Yeah. Four albums. Uh, good, good, The Bad, The Ugly was first. Mm -hmm. Then I came with Streetwise. Then we came with The Game of Death. And then when the movie came out, my little brother and them, we did an album called Blood On My Money. Okay. And we uh, did a... Fucking with Troy, we had did an underground album called uh, The Game Over. We never released that. That shit Troy was... Reed, yeah, Troy Reed, okay. right? We never released that. But this one, I'm trying to do all the old songs plus two or three new songs for the for the for the Marv Style movie. But the soundtrack will be our old music and everything. Put it together in one package, and that's it, man. And I don't even want to. After I put out this film and this movie and this music, I don't want to deal with the street shit no more, man. So I feel my story has been told enough, enough, enough. I just want to. Tell the music side of it, how I see gangster rap started, and how I seen it die. So that means for this one, AZ going in the booth? For sure. Coming out, you coming back, going back in the booth? You yeah, I'm going to drop like two or three joints, man. Two or three joints, all, all AZ. Yeah, and my man Pretty Tone, he going to be on board too. Okay. Get Gangsta in there, Lou, Whip, everybody. We're going to do one song together, I hope, man. My nigga still in the right state of mind. We, we going to make it pop. So how, like, like, um... What, what would you rap about right now in 2008 opposed to 1988? Yeah, I would just, with, you know, it's like when you hear a beat, man, and I look into my thoughts and I look at the circumstances, the shit just come to my mind, man. It's like painting a picture and shit, man, of what, what, what it is, man. And you know? You understand? It's, 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 gonna come out. it's, it's gonna what come it is, out. man. I, I, I'm going to point it out. You understand? If I say the 80s, crazy. 17-year-old Ben's baby. He's getting it. Wild gravy. Pockets, Mitch, French kicks, outfits, smelling good. I'm talking about Ben. But it still fits now. Because I'm seeing you being this from the 80s. So I'm going to put it in that order for you to say, oh, that's real still. It ain't gonna be whack. You're gonna be able to bounce to it and enjoy it, man. But still get something from it, though. That's the difference. So, so when you did the movie, did you have a lot of people mad at you? Like, calling you like, yo, I don't like the way you depicted me. I think that was me. How did that go? If they'd have did Trap, okay. I wouldn't have got those type of phone calls. Okay. You feel me? I'm mad because they betrayed me at the end on some funny shit. But why did they do that? To try to sabotage the real so they could win in the fake world? But hey, listen, the truth got to come back to the light. You feel me? Yeah, so for, so for, so for this, for the new one that's coming out, is it done the way it was supposed to be done? Or is this something new? Like, I explain it, I want to understand that. The new film that I'm writing? Yeah, is it, is it the so scene for scene the is the bottom, it's, it's the truth, man. The truth. It's. I'm not even standing Rich Poet Alpo story. I'm gonna bring that, you know, like with the first five minutes of the film, show you what happened. But I'm showing you how gangster rap was born, okay. and how it ended. Okay. You feel me? What happened to us? Why we never blew large enough, and how the government, you know, it's just telling you the inside, the truth about this shit, man. So, so we all knew y'all, it was three of y'all. 
you rich and Poe. That's the, the story with us. Rich is no longer here. Don't rest in peace. Poe is still alive. We don't know. Like I don't know where he had anything like that. So has he ever tried to reach out to you and contact you or how that? I spoke to Alpo like three or four times, man. Since through, the movie. Through, through Troy Reed since okay. the movie. Poe is still the same with me, for real. And people don't understand that. It's like me and Alpo never had a problem with each other, man. Never. But I just don't understand how he did that to Dick like that. Okay. He explained it, but I still can't see you taking your man life like that. If anybody try to make y'all separate or put a bug in your ears, say, I don't give a fuck who it is, you got to look at that person as someone trying to divide and conquer. And it worked, man. And that's why he in the situation he in. And you understand? And that's that's how I look at that. But, you know, me and him never had no conflict. I think he, you know, Dame, I, when I wrote it, I was like, listen, boom, you contact Poe, Poe going to contact you. Y'all situate what y'all need to situate. I ain't got nothing to do with that. But, you know, make sure he get what he's supposed to get. I'm, I'm not that type of dude, man. You feel me? I'm not the type of dude be riding around, hiding, ducking, got to hide behind tents. I'm going to come to the hood and get love just as wherever I go because I'm going to keep it 100 with you, bro. You feel me? So right now, do you um, do you have to reach back out for him, to him when you do the new movie? How does that work? This film, it's not, like I said, it's touching on it too much. And, you know, I'll have to reach back out to him. But it's not, he may be, it's maybe, our poets may be in it. A scene or two. Okay. It's not, you, yo. You gotta read this shit to really understand what okay. I'm doing. I don't want to stay on that shit. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. this book right here. Okay. If you read this book, man, word for word, for real, for real, mm -hmm. this is the truth, man. From the heart, and that's that. So they also could get it on azgameover.com. Uh, could they get it there? You could get it simonandschusters.com. Okay. You could. It'll lead you to how yeah. to get it. Basically, man. Google, Google, yeah. game over. Good but this book. is a good book, man. It's doing well in the stores, too. They can't keep it on the shelves, so. So that's Learn what it is. Book. I think we basically, anything else you want to just let the people know before we go, before we take a look at the spaceship that you. <laughs> yo, we basically, yo, we basically going to keep this one in the hood. A lot of cats, man. Y'all can come through, holler at me. I don't know the number yet, but uh, I'll try to get it to y'all. Okay. We'll have a number for cats to try out. For, we want to keep it. And it gives cats a shot, you know, to get on the joint, to play Tone, to play Lou, to play myself. Because I'm not letting none of my niggas play in the movie as themselves. If they play in it, they're going to be someone else. Okay. But we need them to be young how we was to bring forth what we're trying to say. You feel me? All right. So also, before we go, like I said, there's a lot of artists from Harlem. Could some of the artists that was... Already out? Could they come be in the movie? Oh, also? for sure, man. Like, how do you? How for can sure. you unify Harlem? Because I know Harlem ain't unified. But this is—I feel this film could do that, man. Okay. And I'm gonna try my best to, you know, to work with these cats, man. You know, but uh. You know, a lot of shit ain't rap shit. Oh you yeah. Got niggas, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how could how could you, you know, squash a lot of shit just for a project? At least, how could you do that? I'm gonna try, bro. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try, man. So, so yo, that's what it is. I'm Doggy we'll Diamonds. Man. I feel if we if we can fix it with this, we can fix a lot of other stupid shit, man. For real, because Harlem got infiltrated by a whole bunch of shit, bro. And if y'all read that book, y'all learn how Harlem got infiltrated. And when this movie come out, you gonna learn a little bit more. But get the book now. Azgameover.com. Google this man. This Az. Get the spelling too. Let's make sure the spelling is right. A Z I E. Get that spelling right. Google that and watch what you see come up. The living legend right here, AZ. It's Doggy Diamonds, Jordan Tower on the film, Jen around the back, Mr. Wreck. We in Harlem. Yes. Shout out your people for Sugar Hill, man. Mob style for life, man. ForbesDVD.com.